find Jesus being led into temptation led to that place of the wilderness just after his baptism, you know, that moment of euphoria in his life. His Jesus being taken into the River Jordan by John the baptizer. And if any of you know this particular passage of Scripture, and it's a different in the different versions of the Gospels, you will know that when Jesus was baptized, there was this wonderful moment when the skies were opened up, and it says that it appeared like a, a dove fell from heaven or came and, and landed on Jesus, and this voice from heaven said this is my child my beloved with whom I am well pleased well if that wasn't a clear sign to the people who were gathered on the riverside that day that this was a, a particularly uh, extraordinary human being that this was in so many ways the son of God I, I don't know whatever what other clear sign that they needed but it was directly after this euphoric experience that, that Jesus is led into the wilderness to, to, to be there for 40 days and for 40 nights. How many of us, when we've had that most euphoric experience of our lives, when we have felt that everything is just rosy, going well, perfection, that suddenly it's in those moments of, of letting go of the need of God, that we get driven into the most tempting places of our lives. That we get so tempted about what it is that the world will offer us. You know, I think sometimes when we lose our dependence upon the God that is with us, the God who is in us, the God who created us, when we, those times when we think we can just go it alone and it's plain sailing from here on in, it's those moments that we need to hold on tightest to the faith that we believe in. Because I think it's at those times that our humanity takes over and our surrender uh, is, is, is given away, is taken away. I don't know, about, perhaps that's just me this morning, but, but certainly I have found in my own life that over and over again, whenever I felt that, 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 that I'm able to do this in my own human will, in my own human strength, it's those times that I find myself being led into temptation, led into the temptation of what the world might want to offer me temptation led into temptation a temptation of believing that there's no need for God anymore a temptation of feeling that that I'm okay and it's really not about anybody else a temptation to to feed upon the things that caused my destruction in the very first place and a temptation to return to old ways instead of continuing on that path to a place of blessedness and to a place of holiness. I think it's in those times that often people around us can lead us into temptation, to believing that we are more than we are. You know, sometimes it's, it's difficult for us as pastors, you know, because we have so much vested in us. And, and not just as pastors, but as people in, in positions around the world, there's so much vested in us. And, and, and we get our 15 minutes of fame every Sunday when we can get up and speak to a group of people. But I, I tell you, there are times when I'm at the door on a Sunday and people go past and, and I, you know, maybe not this morning, perhaps I won't get it this morning, but people will come and I'll say, you know, you, you've really preached a good sermon this morning, Pastor. Um, and you get built up into that feeling of euphoria. Now, now I want to say I always want to be able to preach a good sermon, but I always always want to be able to keep my feet firmly on the ground. You know, sometimes as, as pastors and as people, we get put on pedestals. And I think sometimes when we put ourselves on those pedestals, whatever it is, wherever, perhaps even at work, when people think that you're doing the best job possible and that nobody could replace you. you know, one thing I learned very quickly in my life that nobody is indispensable. You know, and yet we, we think that we are. We put, you know, we, we put ourselves on those pedestals. We allow others to put ourselves on those pedestals. And it's at those times that I think that we are at the most vulnerable to being led into temptation, to thinking that we are the bee's knees, to thinking that we are, is that a phrase I'm allowed to use here? That's a nice phrase, the bee's knees. Um, all that I've heard. Um, you know, the, the, those feelings of thinking that we can do absolutely everything and absolutely anything and we stop relying on God. We stop relying on putting our feet firmly on the ground, on that ground that belongs to the holy. If we're in that place this morning, I want to remind you, lead us not into temptation, 
Lead us not into that place when we think we can go it alone. Lead us not into that place where we can be tempted by the, what the world would offer us in stature and grandeur and all of those things or perhaps being tempted into those places of thinking that, that we can um, use or, or abuse our bodies. Uh, all of those things that we get tempted to do when we stop relying on our relationship with God and we start relying on our relationship with ourselves. I, I wonder if Jesus felt that when he was baptized that day. And when the, the voice of heaven, can you imagine the voice of heaven coming and speaking to this whole group of people and saying, this is my child with whom I'm well pleased. Can you imagine what the disciples were saying? Yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's the bee's knees. He's got the answers to the whole world's problems. And, and I can just imagine perhaps Jesus in his own humanity taking all of that on and feeling as though his own self-importance, just as we do. You see, Jesus was not just fully divine, but Jesus was fully human as well. He experienced all of the thoughts and feelings that we do. And Jesus feeling that place of self-importance. And perhaps that's why he was taken and driven into the desert to bring him down, to knock, put him down a peg or two. Just like so many of us, sometimes we need to get brought not to our knees, literally, but to be reminded that we are a child of God and that without God in our lives, we make huge mistakes. Without that awareness of the presence of the holy in our lives, it's easy to get confused with what the world offers rather than what God offers to each and every one of us.